Lots of politicians running for president for the last 30 years have argued, I'm an outsider, I'm not really part of the beltway. I am, I am change, I am different, I am new. I won't do to you what has been done to you for the last 35 years. What is it that has happened to people over 35 years as they kept voting for somebody who was an outsider and who was different and who would bring hope and change? The big word here is change. The gap between rich and poor in this country widened literally every year. The level of wages went absolutely nowhere. Every statistic shows pensions down in terms of what confidence you can have when you get old. Benefits down, job security down, benefits of all kinds down. So where's the change? Of course the American people are looking for something to change. One after another of these clowns, Republican, Democrat, promising that as outsiders, as different, as new, as committed, and then nothing fundamentally changes. So here we have an election in which the American people, in large numbers, vote for change. They're not voting for Mr. Trump's policies. Nobody has any clear idea what they are, him included. Well, what can we say about it. A number of things. First, the liberals. They made the following mistake over the last 30 years, which they never admit. I don't think they'll admit it now either. They thought they could make themselves in power forever by saying to the mass of people, vote for us because we are not going to do it to you as badly as those Republicans do. The deterioration you're suffering will slow down. We'll give you some offsets. We'll do a few things to make the downturns less painful. And that's all we have to do. They were convinced that the mass of people had nowhere else to go. I mean, either Democrat, which isn't so bad, or Republican, which is worse. So as long as you're a little bit better than the Republicans, you win. You get all their votes. You don't. Because what you're doing is you're creating in your own ranks a mass of people who, if they see a chance for something that might really change, will go there. For a population that's betrayed and bitter, that's gone through 30 years of decline with nothing coming down the pike to indicate one whit of improvement, any change is acceptable. And Mr. Trump wasn't scary for most of them. Mr. Trump will be no more able to change the basic conditions of the capitalism that afflicts the American people than any of his predecessors were. Which means that Mr. Trump is setting himself up for exactly the same betrayal that people feel about Obama and about all the people before Obama. So the irony is, here is also an opportunity for what? We have a chance as a left, now that we are much larger and know ourselves to be larger, now that we have shown that 13 million Americans will vote for somebody who says, yeah, I'm a socialist. Granted, he's the most moderate socialist one can imagine. There is now, I think, an opportunity to say, if the left can get its act together, that the problem here is a capitalism that has been no good for the majority of people for 40 years. That's our problem. Changing our leaders has made no major difference in that basic story. So changing them again, from an Obama to a Trump, or from a Trump to whoever the next one is, that's not a solution. Well then what do we do? We've got to change the economic system. If we do it, we build the basis for what? We build the basis for a new political party. Because such a movement to change the economy has to have a political expression. It has to have an agency that goes around and explains to everybody else what it's doing and why it's doing it. Because the support will be there if we do it. This will be a political party whose goal is to reduce 
the footprint of capitalism in our economy and to raise the footprint of an alternative system, which you can call worker co-ops, which I do, or worker self-directed enterprises, or a different way of organizing production so that people together democratically decide what to produce, how to produce, where to produce, and what to do with the profits. And you need a political party that will advocate for that kind of change. And by doing that, we'll show that the Republicans and Democrats are advocates for the continuation of capitalism. They just differ on exactly how to do it. But two, two parties that are two wings of the same economic commitment means you don't have any real choice unless another party comes along, which is another argument for its emergence. We are strong enough to do that now. Yeah.